These are men sitting around the campfire. When the travelers arrived in the gold fields, they were unsure of the problems waiting for them. The people were so eager to find this sparkling gold that they set out for work right away. They soon got the picture. It wasn't simple at all. It was just the opposite of simple. Many people got hanged for stealing horses, or they would get a T branded on their forehead, which stands for thief. If there was an extremely nice judge, then the person would get a T branded somewhere else on their body so no one could see it. There weren't any laws in California, but the men knew the difference between right and wrong, so they settled it themselves. Lots of people also claimed jumped, which was untruthful. Some miners got their ears clipped if they did anything bad, like stealing gold, claim jumping, etc. Tours had tremendously expensive prices, but they had to pay them because they needed the supplies to survive on, otherwise they died. The housing was also terrible. The hotels only had one room for everyone that stayed there had to share. The people didn't want other people stealing their gold, so they bought gold belts and put the gold in the little pockets of the belt. This way, they could go to sleep and not have to worry about someone taking their gold. As you can see, most of the merchants made all of the money by selling the things that the miners needed to mine with or things to protect their gold with. Wagons traveled in trains, numbering from 50 to 100 for safety reasons. They depended on each other for survival. Wagons could break. Animals and people died. Food at times had to be shared, as well as water, and Indians could attack. Most Indians allowed the pioneers to pass through their lands peacefully, and some even helped the 49ers. Others, fearing these strangers would take their land, attacked the wagon trains. After all, this land has, had belonged to the Indians for hundreds of years. At night, the wagons formed a circle. Several campfires cooked their meals and sang songs trying to relax from their long day's journey. It was a very difficult trip to California by wagon train. Traveling by bongo boats was the way miners crossed the Chagres River. Bongo boats had flat bottoms, were made of wood, and had a sheet over one end to provide shelter from the sun. The Chagres River was shallow, and the miners moved the boats by using long poles. The diorama is about two men who are painting for gold. It shows the river where some of the gold could be found. My diorama tells the three ways to California in 1848. One was by wagon train across North America. Another way was to rounding, rounding Cape Horn, which was going around near Antarctica. The last way was through the Isthmus of Panama, where he goes through Central America. This diorama is about ways of finding gold and problems in California. The ways of finding gold is by sluices, hydraulic mining, panning, and cradles. The problems in California is claim jumping, horse stealing, and gold stealing. If the thieves were caught guilty, they would be whipped, hanged on a hanging tree, Branded a T on their head or ear clip. This is Hang Town, and this is a hanging tree in a hotel, the saloon, and the general store. This is a man panning for gold. This is a cradle in the, right here, and some men rocking it. And this is a long time. Some of these books are factual, and some of these are stories about the gold rush. This particular book is written in a story-like manner, but it has factual material. In order to write our report, we read the book, um, took notes, and we wrote our report in our own words. This is the most factual. We this is the most factual factual book that we used to write our report in the Gold Rush with. We used all of these books to write our to write our report. Of course, we had to give the author of all these books credit, so we wrote a bibliography at the end of our report.